tell me a little bit about Operation Greenback. What was that all about? Operation Greenback was the first congressional certified money laundering group where we could take our proceeds that we made from money laundering and funnel it back into the undercover operation to buy whatever we wanted to rent undercover apartments, undercover cars, jewelry. I went to the seizure cage and got a Rolex and a gold chain and tried to look like every gangster in Miami. And um, we, uh, so we had it pretty good. I mean, I had a 280ZX, brand new 280ZX I was driving around and, and John was the main undercover agent. I was more the administrator. I did some light undercover stuff with him, kind of a, acted like his gopher a lot of times. But did you like undercover? I did not like it. Yeah, why not? Uh, I didn't like the way, I, I saw that how the undercovers were kind of used and abused a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I first went on, people told me, you know, any, mon any monkey can buy dope. Any money, any, I can send a monkey in to go buy dope, you know, uh, be, being undercover was no big deal. In fact, it was kind of, you know, like on the lower totem pole of, of, of stuff. And, uh, at that time I just, and, and I, I think John kind of turned me off because John, uh, IA did an invest, somebody made an accusation against John. And IA did an investigation of him and it interrupted our case for a while. And I, I saw, you know, and I saw the way he was treated by IA and uh, I was interviewed by him and I wasn't treated any nicer. And uh, I just, I saw it as a way to get in trouble, you know, for bad things to happen. So. So getting back to Operation Greenback though, what, what, is it money pickups? What are you doing? What's the focus of, of Operation Greenback? What, are you, what's your, what is the ultimate goal here? Well, we had different groups doing different things, but like I think you and I spoke about one of my old partners, Bob Starkman, um, although I wasn't his partner, but I mean, he worked in our group. Um, those guys would do, they would follow, they would take leads and follow money launderers uh, around and do stops on them. At that time, remember, the Colombians were, there was plenty of Colombians in Miami with a visa. You could, a Colombian could get a visa to come to the U.S., no problem. So we had, we had a lot of Colombians that were on the money laundering side, but not on the dope side. So they would do the money pickups. We through an intel, we'd find out who they were, wiretaps, surveillance, typical stuff. And we'd find out who they were and we'd sit on a house, sit on a car, whatever it was, and try to take them off. And we'd, we'd stop them, do a 1050 on them, and uh, they'd have, you know, a million dollars in the trunk and we'd ask them, like, where'd you get this money? Because they'd always give a consent. And, and it, it was always a consent search. And, uh, cause we really didn't have a whole lot of PC at, tw uh, you know, anyway, uh, they'd consent and we'd pop the hood or pop the trunk rather. And, uh, there'd be, you know, a hundred a million dollars in there. And we'd say, whose money is this? I don't know. I'm just driving the car over to, you know, aunt Susie's house or whatever. Well, how about we keep it for, for safekeeping? And, and uh, yeah, I guess that's okay. And uh, then they, after a while, they started asking for receipts for it. Because at, at the beginning, they didn't even want to have a receipt because mm. they didn't want to give their name up. Oh, okay. Okay. But the, but the goal of Operation Greenback was essentially you guys were cutting off the money supply. We were, we were going after, our focus was to go after the money. Okay. Strictly the money.